an explosion of fire that suddenly ended three lives at the center of an unusually volatile and public family drama. The victims were two little boys. The suicidal perpetrator was their father, a man suspected but never charged in a disappearance of his wife two years ago. The boy's grandparents said they feared that father might be capable of violence, and tonight they have their terrible confirmation. Here's ABC's Neil Karlinski. It was a twisted murder-suicide. Two young boys killed at the hands of their father, Josh Powell, in a terrifying end to a long and sordid nightmare. I was afraid that if he had the chance, the only way he could win this game that he was playing was to kill them. But what happened inside the house before the flames broke out is far more sinister than anyone could have imagined. Police say Josh Powell tried to kill his seven-year-old son Charles and five-year-old Braden with a hatchet before the fire could take their lives. I don't know if his intent was to try and put him out before the fire got him, but he didn't do a very good job of it. Josh Powell was no stranger to police scrutiny. He was the prime suspect in the disappearance of his wife, Susan Powell, missing over two years now. Just before 12.30 Sunday afternoon, the two boys were escorted to Josh Powell's home by a caseworker for a court-ordered visitation with their father. Police say he locked the caseworker out and ignited two five-gallon cans of gasoline, sparking an explosive fireball that leveled the house, killing both boys and Powell. And they say there were signs he had been carefully planning his final act. He donated their toys to a local charity over the weekend and sent goodbye emails to several people. We've discovered multiple emails that he sent to his pastor, he sent to his cousins, and he sent to other people that are a bit longer in length. They dictate what to do with the utilities, what to do with his money, what to do with certain aspects of his life. But he said nothing about his missing wife. Powell's story to police was that the last time he saw Susan was at their home in Utah just before taking the boys on a midnight camping trip, a story that never quite added up. He's disturbed. He just disturbed. Uh, the, the act that he did was cowardly. Today, Susan Powell's parents, Chuck and Judy Cox, say their grandsons had recently started remembering more about what happened on that night in 2009 when their mother vanished and were beginning to see things about the camping trip. They say one of the boys even drew a picture indicating that their mother was in the trunk of the car. That's Daddy, that's Charlie, and that's me. And he, then he said, well, Mommy's in the trunk. Shortly after Susan Powell vanished, Josh Powell moved to a town south of Seattle with their boys and had been living with them there at his father's home. Both sat for an interview with ABC's Abby Boudreau in 2011. Everyone who knows me knows that I would never hurt her. I would never hurt my boys. But late last summer, when the home Josh shared with his father was raided by police, Josh lost custody of his two boys to Susan's parents. In the raid, Stephen Powell was charged with possession of child pornography. Susan was uh, very, very sexual with me. She was very flirtatious. I mean, I'm, I'm her father-in-law, and uh, I did, I mean, we, we interacted in a lot of sexual ways because Susan enjoys doing that. And you knew about this. She's a very flirtatious person. Susan's friends say she never wanted her children anywhere near her father-in-law. The very first time I met Josh and Susan, they told us about his dad and how he was into pornography. And we knew he was a pretty bad guy. And Susan had basically told us he's never setting foot in my house. In fact, Susan's sister told me when they would come to visit, Susan would stay in a different home with the two little boys while Josh Powell stayed with his father. Why? Because the father-in-law was so creepy. Court-ordered supervised visits began in November of last year, and Josh Powell was fighting for their return ever since. In a court filing this past Wednesday, he made a strong appeal. I have proven myself as a fit and loving father who provides a stable home even in the face of great adversity. A lesser person would fall under the intense scrutiny I am facing. But the judge requested a lie detector test and further evaluation. I don't think the order of the evaluation caused this. I think that this has been um, coming, it's been brewing for a long, long time. And even though the family begged the court for help, those visitations were in place and they were allowed. 
The boy's grandparents say they are convinced that Josh Powell saw the kids as his own, like possessions, and he didn't want anyone else to have them. Her blood sister told me the parents begged for him not to have visitation at all. I mean, come on, what more do you want? The mom has been murdered. She was taken out of Josh Powell's home and murdered with the boys in the car. He also had them in a scenario with his father, who is now behind bars for child pornography. Under these circumstances, the judge should not have ordered visitation at Josh Powell's home. We got to, to bond very closely with them in, in the, the three months, so we'll, we'll just have to deal with memories. He could have at least left a note behind, at least we saying, could have saying where could Susan was. Rest. Tonight at the boys' elementary school, children are leaving messages trying to make sense of the loss of their schoolmates, a loss that no adult can fully explain. It just seems unreal. And at the Cox home, children's beds will sit empty. An entire family has been wiped out. I'm Neil Karlinski for Nightline in Graham, Washington. And 2020 will delve deeper into the Powell family tragedy this Friday, an hour-long special